next time while I'm going to do part of it. And my new apprentice, who's learning how to hang paper, who's starting his own company. Interestingly, he has all the tools to hang paper, he and his wife, but they'll be uh, doing their paper hanging in Miami. So, <coughs> we have prepped the walls, and now the sealer is sufficiently dry. We had a fan moving on it, we brought the air down to 69 degrees. So now, where do you start hanging? This is something that, even if you're new and you do a great job hanging your paper, if you should plan the job incorrectly, it will look terrible. Okay, so let's look at our pattern. We have flowers over here and over here. So I'm already thinking, ideally, it's one wall. I want, if I'm going to have a flower on the edge of one wall, I want one on the end of the other. Because when I look at the wall, I'm going to catch that. Actually, this is a bathroom. You don't have a lot of space to back up and take the whole wall in. So you might get away with a mistake if you make one. But if you're doing this on a wall where you walk into the center of the room and you're looking at the left and the right simultaneously, you made a big mistake if you didn't lay out your wallpaper to take into consideration where the beginning would be and what would be at the end. So let's start with that in mind. My wallpaper is 20 and a half inches wide. So what I want to do is simulate my wallpaper width with my tape measure. The issue is where is it going to end in relation, where will the seams end in relation to these corners and our obstacles such as trim. Okay, so 20 and a half and 20 and a half is 41, 20, 30, 40, yeah, 41, okay. Now, see, I like this. Look where we land, 20 and a half. Okay, that would be perfect. I'm just shy, though, of, of the trim. But the paper expands. We might get away with it. We're right on top of it. I think we'll get away with it, okay? I'm banking on it. So we wanna to go to 41 again. Okay, here's where we land, about right here. We'll be, we'll be trimming it on that obtuse angle. One and a half. One and a half. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. I wind up with a piece that's 10 and 3 eighths from my wall. We can do that. So now I will make sure that my flowers are symmetrical in so far as if I have flowers on the end, I'll have flowers on the other end. Or if I have a space on the left, I'm going to try, we try. We keep that in mind. Um, and if, if it doesn't work out, what we do is we take the first sheet and pull it back to the left and we make waste so that where the first line starts, when I go through all my sheets, I have the same pattern on the end. It's, that's what we call engineering the layout. Okay. Oh, you can see. So when you're dealing with a non-vinyl wallpaper, 
it tends to be very vulnerable to tearing. Just watch how easy it is to rip this in a corner. Once I get in my corner here, my wallpaper doesn't give me a lot of play if I should make a mistake. So, we want to push this in nice and easy. And we want to remove all the tension that could make it rip. For example, first there. Ideally, you want to bend your wallpaper into the shape where it's going to get cut. But in order to do that, you have to keep finding the corner without cutting too much. It's very easy to cut too much of your wallpaper off. Okay, so we want to lift this. And for our final cut, see I didn't take too much off. I just want to push that in my corner now with my finger. If you use this, you might rip it. Nice and easy after you push your finger in there. Okay. Now we have it nice. Can't go wrong there, right? Okay, see how we did. Very nice. Look at that nice cut. It's right up against the corner. One last cut against the bottom, and we're good. Now I'll just clean up my corner and be done with it. Okay, can I have this sponge? Thank you. Okay, so doing an out, outside obtuse angle requires a Christmas tree-like sweeping motion with your smoother. So I'm doing this. You want to get that angle down tight. And so there's no doing this. You'll burnish the corner there. You want a sweeping motion. Christmas tree-like. You know the way a Christmas tree lays out like that? You don't want um, any air, obviously, going to trap that. At the very top, you'll see that I cut at the very top of the obtuse angle. If I didn't, I wouldn't be able to get this paper to sit properly. All right, let's get that in. So. Now here's an um, interesting obstacle. We come to one obstacle and we have to make sure that we don't overcut it. So, I'm feeling for my obstacle first. Cutting that way. Okay. Now, Careful here when you do this, you don't want to rip this. This is vulnerable right now. It's susceptible to tearing. And so I'm just going to notch it on my side to take any tension off of it so that it can, you see, it can, if I didn't do that, it would tear. 
go take your time on these tough cuts here. One of the ways to save wallpaper, and sometimes a lot of wallpaper, is when you're wallpapering around doorways, windows. Now, the layout of this job necessitated that I violate one of my rules and I come within three inches of, a, of an obstacle. It happens, sometimes you cannot get a seam far enough away. Ideally, you want it four to six inches away from an obstacle. You want a good piece of meat to hang on these things because wallpaper is not always perfectly straight. And if you're hanging a little strip, sometimes a little strip doesn't yield to the waves, the vertical waves of a piece of wallpaper. It's something that your eye doesn't see. So please come over here and check this out. We have here a three inch strip. But now, am I gonna waste seven and a half feet of wallpaper here to give me this little strip? Maybe I have to. But look on the end of the wall. I'm going to have at least eight to 10 inches of wallpaper at the end of that strip. And If I were doing a whole room, I could hold that sheet and meet it up to a left piece. Now here, I need, so this is my right edge, I'm going to need a left strip. So I won't have a left strip over there, but if you're hanging an entire room, just cut this just below the, the horizontal piece and fill it in later. I'm going to do that because I'm going to take a strip of wallpaper from this left strip and I'm going to use it here. I'm not going to waste a whole sheet of wallpaper. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, you could cut that. So, as I was saying, there's no need to waste 18 inches of wallpaper over here when all we need is a couple of inches of wallpaper down here. So what we're going to do is splice it in Smooth right the at the top. So we're going to just leave that strip void right now. And then when we get to the other side of the door, we'll use the overlapping piece that fills in this side to put it in here. You see, at least we're not wasting two sheets of wallpaper, just part of one. So this sheet was just installed. So I have a question for the viewers. How do you like the seam? Now, obviously you're seeing a black line there. The question is, can we perfect the seam? Can you hold that camera? So I wanna show you how to perfect the seam. First of all, your hand should be really clean because this paper, is is ready to just leave alone. So you don't wanna keep wiping it. This paper is now moving on the glue and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So watch this. It's coming close to the seam. We're on the verge of pushing the seams too close together. But if we leave it like this, we have literally a human hairline. So I wanna show you, if you come in, just zoom in on the seam. I want them to see this seam. All right, can I see it? Now watch this. You see this, the hairline disappears? But look how I'm making it disappear. I'm pushing it from a foot away. If you go too close, It'll look great, and then when you take your finger away, the tension that's on this will pull it back. You wanna start 
eight to 10 inches away from the seam, okay? Again, my hand is about 10 inches away from that seam. I'm pushing on the wallpaper, and if you look close, can you bring them in close? Yes. I'm moving this wall covering, I'm making ripples, I'm pushing that seam closer, and I'm forcing this to remain in place by pushing down on it. Let's do it again. Okay, we'll come down here. Let's get in real close here. Okay, I'm wiping it down. I'm pushing it. Can they see how it's, from me pushing this, it joins together better? Okay, now, if I leave this, it's gonna pull back. See those ripples? I'm moving the wallpaper over closer to the seam. And I'm holding this down so it doesn't move. Okay, so I'm going to treat the middle now. I'm going real close to the wallpaper. So what did I just do by doing that? I made this impossible to move anymore. Let's do it up here. Now look at the seam. How much better does that seam look? Working the seams is what makes or breaks the paper hanger. I'll just do it above. And we'll cover the principles once again. So you can see the hairline fracture there. I'm gonna stop pushing my paper over. I can see it moving. I mean, here I am, I'm overlapped. It moves so much. Okay, making my ripples, joining that seam. Now, secure my middle. There we go. So when you hang the paper, give it five minutes to relax and then come back to it and perfect your seam. close angle. In other words, you're creating an environment under the paper where it's going to be for the next several years. By really removing any excess glue from the area so that it can just dry and keep the paper in place. If you have too much glue, the paper is going to slide. Now, please show them a seam up and down. Okay, cool. Beautiful, right? All right, so if you've glued your wall, 
and you want to keep it from drying out because your air conditioner is blowing on it. I want to offer you a good idea. Just have a spray bottle handy and just do this. Just a little bit, just to keep, you're not weakening the glue. You're keeping the top layer uh, wet and the only thing that's going to evaporate is the water that you're putting on. You don't want your glue drying out. It becomes very difficult to handle the wallpaper if your glue dries. So please take my advice. So just show them the issue where we uh, came across a nice piece of paper that we can fit in here for our splice. And so we're just going to match it up to here and it down here. Can I have a water um, spray bottle? Oh, I got it. I keep forgetting, but this will make it much easier to install. I'm losing pressure every time. If your paper is really stubborn and you have to do a, a splice like this, wet it down. Make it where it's a little saturated. It's easier to install. It's just a matter of getting the pattern matched up, getting it really in place, and then the first thing you're going to cut is the side. And I favored more than less. So I may have to trim the side again, depending. So now, so now, push my excess glue out. Would you agree that that meets up beautifully? Yes. Okay, now where am I splicing through? Somewhere around here. Let's, let's cut with the pattern, right? So let's show them what I'm doing. I'm cutting with the lines. This way, you can't see the cut. It's less noticeable. Pull this down. We pull this up. Granted, this has been down a couple of hours, so. So there you have it. a splice cut. What do you think?